Hey friends, this is Ganesh. Hope you're doing wonderful. In this video, we are going to see about a sequence list. How to generate a sequence list in an ALB format. Let's get into the slide to understand first how the sequence list looks like. So this is the way. Here the data, there are two different data, header and item. And here it is, each header has its own item and uh, this is generated with a sequence and every header or every record has its own uh, expand and collapse option. And you have one more option where you can expand and collapse the entire report. Okay, so this is the output of the ALV uh, in a sequence list. Now we are going to generate this format with the help of a new class. It's pretty simple, uh, only the new class, it's almost similar like the factory method what, where we are using. So like uh, get the reference while passing the uh, internal table name and internal table data, sorry, internal table data and get the reference and on top of it, if you want to manipulate some other functionality, then use that particular uh, reference to get the columns or function list or the level and so on. Okay, so it's similar to that particular whatever we have used so far in the previous ALVs for the factory method. And the code would be like this. So you need, uh, here the example is, I'm going to use a purchase order header and item information. So I need an internal table. So on the flow, I'm going to uh, declare this EKKVO and EKPVO with few uh, fields and data. And after that, I need an object which refer to the class called SALV hierarchy sequence underscore table. Okay, so there's a new class which uh, supports the to create generate the sequence list. So I need an object for it. And the next one is I need a declaration for an internal table and work area that is holding the binding information. So here we can say hey, sequence is nothing but header and item. So what is the binding between those data? So in my in our example, it is a process of a number. It's going to be bind between. Uh, to header and item information. Sometimes you may have more than one um, field to be bind between your header and item information. In the first example, you can see the flight information. So car ID and con ID, probably this might both the information, both the fields to be binded, right? So it depends on your business need. You can have one or more than one field to be binded. That information ought to be carried in this internal table, okay? And uh, uh, this is the one which I'm going to add it. So here W binding the field names are master and slave. Normally we call it as header and item. The, technically they call it as master and slave details. So the binding to be uh, for master and slave is nothing but the one field here A, B, E, L, N. If it is a more than one field, you have to just repeat this and append it. So row by row you have to add it if it is more than one field for your binding. Okay. And keep the data ready in your IT data binding information. So now the object is ready. Now I need a reference on it. So to get the reference, same like the factory method, uh, here also you have the factory method for this class also. And uh, we have to pass one more additional information. Here is a binding information. The previously we don't give a binding information, just a reference we are receiving it and the internal table data. But here you have to give one more additional parameter as binding information and then receive the reference to your object. And here you have level one and level two because it's um, you have header and item. So the relevant internal table names to be added here. One is for header, one is for item. So always go with the try catch information. If something happens, it at least try to avoid the short term. Okay. And the final data, the final line is going to be display. So based on the reference, once you receive the reference, use the method called display to display your ALV. So the code, whatever we have seen it, that creates a in, uh, that creates an output like this. Okay. I'm sorry, I got a call. So I stopped. Okay, so here this is the output and uh, it creates the header as well as item. You can see you, you're not identifying your, or you're not seeing the uh, expand and collapse icon. Okay, so that needs to be added. That is pretty simple. So how you add a checkbox in an ALV? You need one column. Whatever you want to add, even if it is icon, you need a column to be dedicated for that particular icon. So the same way we are going to use it to have our uh, expand and collapse option also. Okay, so for that, a few changes to be done in my header information because the expansion is the expansion icon is going to be added only in the header level, not in the item level. 
So I need one field to be added in my uh, header internal table. So I'm just changing the structure of the internal table, whatever you want, add it here. And there is one name, any name, user defined name. You can give A, B, C, whatever it is. Here, uh, just the follow the standard expand as one of the um, field name I have added here. And uh, then structure created an internal table. Okay. And I need to get one more object uh, for one thing, but we already used, but in a different class. But here is a SALV columns hierarchy sequence because I need to get which column needs the particular um, expand and collapse button, right? So that for that, I need one object to be generated here. And then we need to get the reference of it. So while getting a reference, uh, I'm going to use a method called get columns. This is object ALV. This is a base uh, object reference. With the help of that, I'm going to get the reference of the first column. Okay, I, I, I want to keep the particular uh, expand button in the first column. So get the reference along with that. Once you get the reference, use uh, information called set expand column. So this is the method which which gives the um, which which makes the column as expand and collapse option. And you have to give what is the name of your uh, internal table field, that field name to be added here in caps in single quotes, okay, within the single quotes. So once it is done, then your the header line has expand and collapse button to be enabled, okay. And the another one is, uh, for example, what happens is by default, all your uh, hierarchy is also not expanded, okay. So it's not like this. Normally what happens is you will get only the header information, not the item information. Okay. So by default, if you want to make it as visible header as well as item, then you need to add a few lines of code. So for that, we call it as a level. So I need one object called level for hierarchy sequence level class and then get the reference. So level one, I want to just get the first level of the object reference, then use the method called set items expanded. So then only by default, your entire things will be opened. Otherwise, everything, only the header information you have to be uh, shown. Then user has to click either each one or uh, you will get one major, not major, one uh, global icon, I can say. Global icon where it expand and collapse the each record, the entire record. Okay, So that will also happen. The user has to do that. So make sure you have this also to be added in your program. So I will show you without this and with this, the difference of your ALB output. And yeah, that's it. Let's get into the system. So this is my system and few codes I have written already. So few declaration, one is the base object I required and the classes SALV hierarchy sequence table and two variables like uh, one is internal table and one is work area. And this is a table type. I use the same and this is for the structure. Then two internal tables which has a data to be displayed in the ALV in a sequence list. One is from EKKVO, another one is from EKPVO table. Okay. So now I need a reference uh, for this object. So go to pattern, web objects, and I have a class name um, CL. S A L V underscore H I E R hierarchy sequence table. This one, and I need a method called factory. Yeah, this is the one. Enter it. So here the binding level. Okay, sorry. Uh, the cursor to be after all the declarations over here. So the binding information is also to be added here and this one returns the reference of your base object you can get it and here it is i e k k o sorry e k k o is a level one data and e k p o is a level two data and i am just enabling the try catch so almost done and we need to add the binding information. So binding information. So the master, um, for the master, the field would be EBALN and what is for the slave? Slave is also the same. If it is more than one, you have to repeat it and add it as a, another record. So each has to be added in your 
body of an internal table so append data binding to it data binding so clear our area data binding set so just pass the message here it data binding okay so we are done now the sequence of your data is ready okay okay one last thing after i receive the reference i have an object called display sorry method called display just make use of that that is the final one which generates your alv format let me execute i believe there are some records okay i have some records here so this is the way it just display the sequence this is my header uh, pivo and the company code the, here you have the description of each field so here purchase document item material target and quantity so if you have material few doesn't have okay so i'm not more concentrate on uh, how to change your thing just this is just a, a video how to display a alv in a sequence list you can just play around with other options to change based it depends on your business need okay so now i need an um, collapse and expand button so here i have only 10 so like the item i'm saying okay here it is i have one, at least two records available for this PO. so this way it it displays the three records here so now i'm going to add a expand button so to add a expand i need one object for columns so that is going to be object col type ref to cl underscore s a l v underscore columns underscore hierarchy sequence okay and then i need a reference so to get a reference along with the column number or column name i'm going to get it okay so before that Okay, let me finish this so get the reference first so column is equal to object alv and there is a method called get columns so i want this and the column number one so i'm going to get the reference for the column number one okay now i, I need a small change here change in the structure so the structure would be Begin of STU EKKO So here EB ELN type EB ELN and company code BUKRS type BUKRS and I need one field with with any name so i'll go with the expand here end of stu underscore EKK. so now i need a body of an internal table so data i'm going to give the same name whatever i have given already an ekko type table of stu ekkl okay and small change in your select because this has additional uh, fields so i'm going to use into Responding fields, or I think I can go ahead without that also because this is I added in the uh, at the end of your internal table, so you can skip that also. And here I don't want to use the data because it's already declared. Okay, only this change, and there is no change in EKPO that is going to be in the on the flow declaration. And one more line to be added. I got the reference of the columns then i'm going to use a method called set expanded column here it is set expand column and the name the internal table field name to be added here okay that's it this will give the global icon which uh, enable and collapse your entire thing and each header has its own uh, collapse and enable option so here it is so each one has uh, you have expand and collapse and you have the header level it is a global icon so if you want to expand everything and if you want to collapse everything okay so now by default if you see uh, it just display everything as a header so by default i want to enable it uh, for the user so that is pretty easy to see the information so for that i need one more object called level so let me have one more object so 
So level type ref to CL underscore SALB hierarchy sequence and level. Okay. So this needs to be get the reference through a base uh, reference variable. So here I'm going to have object. What is the name I have given? Level only. So object level equal to object alv. Excuse me. There is a method called get underscore. get underscore level of one okay so level one i need it so once i get a reference i can say this just open um, the list the items as well so i have to say a method called set items expanded okay save it and act what it and execute so by default you can see all the sequence are getting expanded okay so this is just a beginning like you have a lot more options you can see uh, what are the options are available what are the methods are available to make use of uh, your business needs okay so just play through this and if you have any doubt please let me know and thank you so much for your time see you in the next video bye